from Studio 3K in Rockefeller Center, Deborah Norville. And good evening. What started out as yet another reality show has turned into a national phenomenon. This week, millions of Americans will be tuning in to see who doesn't get fired and who's chosen as the apprentice. The pressure is on the final two, Bill and Kwame, as they're subjected to their final tasks in the most intense assignments they've faced yet. The winner gets a much coveted job with real estate mogul Donald Trump. The two have survived a total of 13 boardroom meetings where others have heard the Donald say those now famous words. You're fired. The Donald is not making those you're fired decisions all by himself. On each side of him are two of his most trusted advisors, Carolyn and George. And they'll be doing it all again in this week's final episode Thursday night when the country finds out who will become the apprentice. But there's some other things we'd also like to find out before the final episode, like just how realistic is this reality show in the business world? And Carolyn and George, have they ever been afraid of being fired themselves? We're about to find out. With me in the studio this evening, Carolyn Kepcher, who is also an executive vice president with the Trump Organization, and George Ross. He, too, is an executive VP with the Trump Organization and senior corporate counsel. It's nice to meet you both. We've been watching you on TV every week. It's Thank you. Nice meeting you, too. How did you all get chosen by Donald Trump to work with him? He um, picked up the phone and called me and asked me, and I said, okay, and that conversation lasted about four minutes. But he'd seen you in operation, Carolyn. You had been running um, a, a property that he ultimately bought and turned into a golf course. Two properties now, yeah. And, and so he kind of had watched you do what you do. Quite a bit. For in the same years. way that they've been watching these people on The, Atron on the Apprentice. Right. right. And George, what was your story? Well, my story is that I've represented Donald for a long time, many, many years. I was his lawyer. I was with a major law firm. And uh, he, I did his first deal, and we've been friends, and I've been working for him now for nine years since that. And he called me in one day, said he was planning on doing this show, The Apprentice, and he would like me to be a judge, and it would take three hours a week. That's what he told me, and I bought the three hours a week. And how much is it really taken out of your day? I would say 30 hours on the show and maybe three hours working for him. Doing the real work that Doing you're supposed to be work. doing. That's correct. And, and the same thing with you, Carolyn. He came to you and said, you know, it's just this. It won't take much time. I really didn't know too much about it. Maybe I said yes too fast. I don't know. But um, I think I got the gist of it maybe two weeks into it. When, when you figured when out. I was definitely already into it is when I really realized how much what a time commitment it was. and while it's donald who's sitting there in the boardroom with with you on either side right. the fact of the matter is the way the logistics of the show have gone it's been carolyn and george out there pounding the pavement watching these people do these sometimes ridiculous things right. that they've had to do to prove themselves what's a typical day been like george when you guys have been out watching one of the stuff oh, uh, i don't think you, I don't, there's no such thing as a typical day That's some of true. them started at 5 36 in the morning some of them were in the afternoon some of them had uh, you you were out there and then you had nothing to do for four hours and then you came back and then you had uh, to count up money that they had or figure out who won the task there's no such thing as a, as a as an average day. It was just uh, put your running shoes on. Put your running okay. shoes on and then just go. And 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 another thing that's a bit of an unreality to this, it looks so buttoned up in the boardroom when the team marches in, the people who are, are eligible to be off that week, and everybody sits there and it looks pretty buttoned up. But it's actually excruciating. You guys are in there for a long time. I'd say yes. Yeah, some would, tasks, have, um, excuse me, some boardrooms have gone on for a very long time. Like somewhere. a couple hours? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And what goes on in there? Are these people you're trying to save their skin? And, well, those and who are fighting for their lives, the boardroom goes on a little longer. And what's been some of the more memorable moments sitting in the boardroom? No, when you got, guys are sitting there and Donald's in between you and these kids. Sam. Sam? <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam comes to mind with those eyes. That's, That's probably all. the first memorable yeah, board. The first one where Sam stood up and Donald said, sit down, Sam, you know. Yeah. And also when Sam, at that point, Donald says, Sam, don't you think it's over? It's over. It's over. Sam. It's over. So it's over. And That's what about the time, I forget which one it was, that he said, don't you get it? No one likes you. Yes. Did you all discuss that beforehand? No. No, we, we, uh, a lot that went on in the boardroom that you don't really see. There was right. a lot of discussion between questions and, and that Carolyn would raise, that I would raise, that Donna would raise, and responses that came from the contestants, very often from the contestants among themselves. When one of them would say, well, you laid down on the job and you didn't do this, and the third the person would say, oh, yes, I did, you just didn't do They would defend themselves. So it went on basically for two hours. So there were some very heated discussions that took place in that boardroom. And while you all had watched 
for instance, um, the tasks being done, you're out there sometimes at five in the morning mm -hmm. when they would begin their day and they're there till the, the, the bitter end when they would finish. Donald wasn't there, but you reported back what you had seen. Were there times when he challenged your own assessment well, of what these contestants had been up to? Disagree. He was out there at times, um, whether it be the helicopter, whether it be by phone, whether he actually just walked up to the suite, whether he just walked down on the street. He certainly did see a, a good amount. Uh, he certainly took our opinion. Right. He, we are his advisors. We told him exactly what we thought. Of course he would disagree with us, but a lot of times I think he certainly agreed with us. And um, did he ever challenge you? And think, yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, he never challenges me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Carol, oh, you, you must have misunderstood. I'm sure he didn't lay down on the floor and go to sleep. I mean, oh, he, he, I mean, he, everything we said, he certainly took that it was truthful, right. without a doubt. Maybe questioned it. Like, to how could this like, guy have done serious? this? Yeah. But absolutely, he listened to us and he took everything. And I'm sure. T took it, took it all in. Absolutely, he took it all in. Then he made a reasonable decision. What's this person gonna get? What we hear is it's a dream job of a lifetime, a $250,000 annual salary, doing what? Well, it depends on who the winner is, naturally, but whoever it is will be groomed into a very high-level executive position. Running a division, they will get a certain amount of guidance to help them because they're basically still, still green, and then eventually they'll just run that division for as long as they care to, as long as they can. And when you say running a division, they will be a president of one of the divisions of Ultimately, the Trump yes. organization? Yes, yes. Ultimately, but in the beginning, they'll be what? Well, in the beginning... At well, this point, uh, there's only make... two people. It's either Kwame or Bill. Correct. So if it were Kwame, what would he be a good candidate he for? Basically, uh, Kwame is, is extremely skilled in handling people, is extremely skilled in handling certain tasks. And depending upon if it happens to be Kwame, I don't know which division uh, Donald would choose to put him in, but we got lots of divisions and need lots of people. And what about Bill? What are his strengths, Carolyn? Where I would think, you see him to be more likely to be? I think Bill's very personable. I think he's very street smart. I think he has a, a good um, way about him that is motivating, makes you want to work with him. I think he's very bright. Um, he is against a Harvard MBA, but I think to his credit, he's done phenomenally. And I think both of them will do incredibly well. Yeah, you know what? There's been a lot of press lately with all the publicity about The Apprentice. There's also been press about some of the divisions of the company that haven't been doing as well, certainly as the ratings on the television show have been. I've just seen some people say, yeah, they're going to stick them on the one that's having a hard time right now. Are the divisions that are having some, some business challenges going to be off limits? Or is that a place where... Talk about the ultimate business challenge, you know, you've got some, some account balance things that look a little interesting, let them in here. He's not, they're not going to be in that, in that right. one area. There's only one area that's, that's got, got a problem, and the problem is, is they're over, the debt is too high and the interest rate is too high. That division will solve its own problems, but certainly they're not going to be put in one that is, that, that's got a, uh, an, any kind of a negative. Where he's got a real... Oh, real you've tough got people mountain in there to do it at that right. point. No, they don't do it. You have experts and they have professionals. You're not going to put e either of these two candidates in that type of thing. And the other thing that makes Thursday night's final broadcast very interesting is many of the former candidates will be coming back in. And I gather that the challenge involves motivating these people that you have just stepped on to get to the final round right. to work with you in achieving your goal. Have they done this yet? Have they done the challenge yet? We know that the announcement will be live on Thursday night. Have they actually done what the challenge is? They have completed the task. And